welcome to our annual candlelight vigil. I'm happy to be here. This is my first time. It's very inspiring. My name is Bonnie Piva, and I'm the chairperson for the Fall River Homeless Service Provider Coalition. Right now, I'd like to welcome Mayor Will Flanagan. Thank you, Bonnie. And first, uh, let me uh, thank Bonnie and everybody here uh, who has come out to help raise awareness uh, for homelessness as well as hunger. And this being a week designated uh, to raise awareness on those two issues, I commend everybody who has come out here uh, this evening uh, to raise awareness and hopefully to make a difference in both of those issues. And it's so unfortunate that even in the 21st century, in the year 2012, uh, that homelessness and hunger are still two issues uh, that we have to talk about in this nation. Uh, but go to any community throughout the globe and you see people who are faced with those two issues. Uh, people who do not have a permanent home uh, to call their own and people who still go to bed at night hungry. And homelessness and hunger uh, cuts across all socioeconomic backgrounds. It affects people of all ages and all classes, all ethnicities. And to be here tonight uh, for this candlelight vigil shows that as a city, we will continue to first recognize that these are two issues that we have to tackle as a community, but also raise awareness regarding these two issues. And I commend all of you, I know people like myself and Reverend Don Beer and Mary Kamara, Mike Dion, I know Dave Sullivan's also here. People like all of us here work on these issues 365 days a year. And even though this is a week, a day, dedicated to raising awareness on those issues, long after the flames go out and long after the people walk away from this vigil, uh, we have to still carry on the mission and that's of ending homelessness and ending hunger uh, as a region, as a nation, uh, as a, a global effort. So I commend all of you for being here and doing your part and know that you have a partner in me uh, who's working right alongside of all of you. I want to say thank you on behalf of the entire city uh, for being here and being a part of these two very important causes uh, and because of the causes that affect uh, not just this city but their global issues also. So God bless all of you and uh, your, your, the message, the word is definitely being uh, taken notice of here tonight. And these are two issues that communities sometimes don't want to talk about. Uh, but that's not the case here in Fall River. So I commend each and every single one of you for being here and doing your part to raise awareness. God bless all of you. Thank 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 you. Hello, everyone. It's really good to have you here this evening, and I want to say thank you because you know something? You really put the energy into this. Homelessness is a problem that has been very persistent. And the message that I really want to say, there can be no backbenchers on this particular issue. We need to focus on a solution, but we need to do it as a community. We need to do it as a city. We need to do it as a country. And we need to focus. That makes you folks out here, those here who are standing out in the cold with the candles, because you know that people are sleeping outside in the cold. As leaders, and communicators and educators about this problem. We need to do this together, and once again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Bob. Just want to thank you, God. I want to thank you, God. I want to thank you, God. Thank you, God. You've been the best friend I've ever had. You've made the Good times outnumber the bad. I want to thank you for always being there. Thank you, God. I want to thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you. And thanks to you. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you. And now we're going to hear a reading and a reflection from Reverend Donald Mann. Well, the word tonight is from the Apostle Paul. Ever hear him? Paul the Apostle? He wrote a letter to the early Christians who lived in uh, Galatia. And he, I've always remembered this. I thought it would be appropriate tonight. Do not get grow weary in well-doing. How's that for good King's English? Do not grow weary in well-doing, which translates, don't get tired doing the right thing. I think that's the good word we need to hear tonight. How can we not grow tired of doing the right thing, of helping people? Helping people who are without homes. Helping people who need some groceries. What can we do to not grow tired in doing that which is right? One thing we can do is remember the work that we do is not ours. It's God's work, right? It's God's work. And when we control it, we own it, we get it's our work, then we get tired. But we remember it's God's work that we're called to do. God has asked us to do it. There's no reason to get tired. It's God we're serving, not ourselves. And sometimes we have to be careful. We who are serving other people, we begin to get that control problems. We begin to think this is our work, our task. But we're not to grow weary in well-doing. One key is, remember, it's God. It's God's work, not ours. The second, the second idea I have, how to not grow tired in doing that which is right, is remember to do what we can do and not try to do that which we can't do. Right? We can all do something. But none of us can do everything. You all know that famous story about the, the little girl, the starfish on the beach. After a storm, all the starfish were stranded on the beach, and there was that little girl grabbing a starfish, throwing it back in the water. And then she'd go back and grab another starfish, throw it into the water. Then she'd go back and grab another starfish and throw it in the water. And so some grumpy old man saw her doing that and asked her, what are you doing? It's useless what you're doing. And she, took up, she picked up one more starfish and threw it in and said, it does, it's not useless as a starfish. It makes a big difference. And that's our challenge for tonight, is if we're not to grow weary in well-doing, we each can do something and not try to do everything. You know that we are doing a lot of work together but one thing we're doing is trying to offer some extra space this winter for the overflow shelter when the when the uh, first step in fills up which it does every night beginning january 2nd we're going to try to find some churches that might open their doors for a week or two at a time but we're going to need volunteers to help staff those churches so if you'd like to help and not everyone can do that. It takes effort to stay up at night in the wee hours. To talk to Major Deming, talk to me. We'd be glad to, the more the merrier, because we each can do something. And the last uh, uh, idea I'd like to share with you about how not to grow weary and well do doing is something I've learned from my friends who practice yoga. And it's called Just Breathe. When you get overwhelmed in life, when the task seems too much to bear, just breathe. And tonight, I want to practice breathing with you, okay? On my right, your left, you're the ooze. On my left, your right, you're the ahs. Ready? Ooh! Ah! Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Never grow weary in well-doing. It's God's work. And we're in it together. Tonight and always. Amen. Thank you, Brian.
right now we have um, some people who are going to come up and share their stories of um, having received homeless services. Um, is Karen here? Hey everybody, thank you for coming tonight. My name is Karen and I'm an alcoholic. I say that because I know this is a hunger and homeless related issue. But alcoholism and addiction is part of my story that caused me to be homeless. Three and a half years ago, I was living in a tent in the woods. And uh, getting drunk every day, getting high every day, you know, hanging out with, you know, people that left a lot to be desired and just doing the wrong thing all around. Until I just, you know, I, I was getting arrested, I got arrested for the last time and they were gonna throw me in jail this time. They had bail on me, it just, it didn't look good. I was 42 years old, you know, pulling these shenanigans, I was just too old for these, for these games. So I came to Fall River, I was hanging, living at my sister-in-law's, and uh, I heard through a friend about the first step in shelter and they explained to me the, the process of how to get in there and I wouldn't leave those people alone. They probably wished that I would at the time. Um, I got in and I still just couldn't leave the drink alone. So I would get kicked out, I would get written up for something and I would get kicked out and I, I did it four times. It took me four times to get it right. The last time I was there, I swore it was gonna be the last time and it was so far. Um, since then, it's been three and a half years I've been sober. I live upstairs at the SRO. The staff at the SRO, between the SRO and the First Step in Shelter have been wonderful. They've got a great program. For anybody out there struggling, um, you know, with homelessness, I know there's, I know quite a few of the ladies and some of the gents that are in the, the shelter. You gotta hang in there, you know, you gotta get it right and things will, good things will come to you. I don't know what everybody's problem is that put them in the shelter, but the point is you're homeless. And um, it's getting cold, it's getting real cold and you don't want to be out there. Um, since I've been at the SRO, I've earned a certificate in medical body and building, billing, excuse me, from the Salter School. I've earned an associate's degree in general studies from BCC and I've managed to hold on to my sobriety since then. Every day is a struggle and I'm always working toward um, achieving something else and I know that at any given time I can go back there. So if you have a place to stay, your own place, reach out to someone who doesn't. Um, I'm not saying take them into your home, you know, maybe donate a $5 gift card to Dunkin' Donuts. You know, get them something to eat, maybe a pair of cheap gloves, a hat, anything like that. And if you know that they're homeless for sure, send them by way of the first step in. Maybe they can get in there, maybe they can get in the overflow. I can't say enough about that place. They, without that place, I would be homeless today. Thank you. Hey, how y'all doing? My name's Josh Arujo. Um, I went into uh, the first step in straight out of jail. I had nothing. And uh, first night out, I got in. I uh, was actually really worried about where I was going to go. Uh, had nothing. But um, I was fortunate enough to get into the first step in. I was in there for about a month. Then I found a job at uh, Blount Fine Foods making soups. and. I've been working it now, two months. Um, I got out of the shelter just about a week ago, and now I'm up in the SRO. It's a good program. A lot of nice people in there, sober, trying to stay sober myself. Um, but I, yeah, I, same as Karen, I can't say enough good things about the first step, and uh, it's pretty much it. Hi, my name is Ed Zitano. Um, I've been a lifetime resident of the city. Um, 
I was a problem child and uh, I ran rampant for a long time. Um, I was a member of this church. And, uh, I struggled with addiction and uh, homelessness for a good part of my life. And uh, being the stubborn part person that I am, I uh, didn't want to ask for help. Um, so I was beat down and uh, to a point where uh, I had no choice but to ask for help, and I went into the first step in and spoke to a, a guy named Mike, and he took me in. Uh, he suggested, which I never took any suggestions before in my life, that I go to a program to help deal with um, drug and alcohol abuse. And I did do that, I completed it, I graduated. And uh, I too am at the SRO program, uh, doing really well. Uh, I, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things I still need to deal with, you know, emotions, feelings, uh, people, there's a lot. But life is a gift and I've learned to appreciate and accept it. Uh, it doesn't, the world doesn't owe me anything. Uh, it was a gift to, to be part of life. And it's such a beautiful thing. And I want to live it. And it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be at the first step and to actually get my life going. I'm uh, actually beginning to become happy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lydia. Um, I came to Fall River in January of this year, and I had domestic violence. So I'm from Boston, and me and my son just went to where they sent us. We are here. It's really scary to be homeless, especially with a child, and not know how you're gonna take care of me. But I was lucky enough to go to the Fall River Family Center where everybody there was really amazing. And now when something good happens, I can't wait to tell them. And they're like a second family to me. They're truly amazing, and I can't stress enough how much they helped me and how amazing they were to my son. And I got housing program through the loft program, and now my son has his own room, and I'm working part-time, and every day is a struggle, but we get through, and I know we'll be okay. Thank you. I want to thank the four people that came up here and let them know how important it is for us to, to hear your stories. I appreciate it. Now we're going to have a closing prayer for Major Elmer Denny of the Salvation Army. Thank you. It's a privilege for me to be here tonight and I just want to echo the words of President Mayor and the importance that not one of us can do it on our own but collectively together we can keep up that fight. A, a wise man once said, uh, William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, while women weep as they do now, I'll fight. While children go to bed hungry, I'll fight. While men go in and out of prison, I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. And uh, I believe that that's what this does, is brings awareness to the fact that we have a fight against our hands, don't we? Yeah. Yet together, we can conquer this, and we can overcome this homelessness, homelessness and this hunger that we face in our world and in our community. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your goodness to us. We thank you for this opportunity to bring awareness to the important causes that are before us. We thank you for those that have given testimony to a life change because someone intervened and provided them a place to stay and put food on their table. 
We know that there are so many more in our community tonight that are going hungry and that are sleeping out in the cold. We pray your blessing upon them, that you might help them to know that they have been lifting up in prayer at this very moment. And we pray your blessing upon this cause, oh God, that it might not go unnoticed, but this community, this state, this country, this world might awaken to the need to respond to these needs, to these people, and to their lives, and help them through these times. Bless each one that we pray, O oh God, tonight. And may all that takes place bring honor and glory to you, for we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. And thank all of you for your attendance and participation. And as we con conclude, Kate Marin will sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was